Hey guys, what's up? My name is Rabbit, and I am covering the ESL Major Series Open number one, and this is going to be round two action between these guys. This is just your average Joes, and if you guys haven't heard about them, then you obviously weren't watching last week's Go For Lol, because they kind of won it by, uh, well, doing some pretty amazing things. If you haven't checked that out, uh, go ahead, and I'll put a link below that in the description. These guys over here are actually reconnecting, so that is uh, extremely helpful. These are Worldwide Wipers, and uh, they are actually a team from Brazil. They did compete in the IEM Sao Paulo League of Legends um, tournament that happened right before what was the major focus, which was their, their StarCraft tournament. Looks like Clay KD will actually be meeting Little Reddick in the bush, so they will find him there. And uh, no stun. Yeah, there's the stun. And uh, Spellsy, Zion, Spartan are going to flash in another stun. Goes out on Little Reddick, and they will be able to get a taunt, possibly, but no. Ziggs gets the first blood. Actually, that's just uh, just Ziggs, not the uh, the bomb-throwing terror we all know and love. But uh, the rest of WWW will be hiding out here. They see them all coming around. Zion Spartan could get a taunt off, but it looks like he did go for that Vorpal Blade first. So, whew, uh, really, really awesome way to start the game for just your average Joes. I think that is the name they have uh, decided on as we follow the magnificent Twisted Fate here towards the uh, the mid lane. Captain Korea, one of the founding members of what used to be Uptown Girls. Looks like Zion Spartan and Clakey D are going to be picking up the raids down there, whereas uh, Maokai is pretty much denied his only purpose of being, namely that early level 2 and uh, really effective ganks, not even hitting all of the creeps with his box because of the pull, so that's going to be really hard there for Maokai. Clakey D is going to take red buff as well, so... Unless uh, we have some horizontal jungling going on there from Yetz, that could be a little bit of a problem. Does not look like he's going to go for any sort of counter jungling. And Pantheon, now that he's hit level 2, even left a uh, small lizard there at the golem buff, is going to be moving up here, and it looks like Lunal Reddick is going to run out of the bushes. He's going to throw the spear, going to stun right out of turret range, and they get him down to about half health. They're not going to push their lead too much. There was a block on Pantheon after having used his shield bash, but uh, just choosing to walk away there. Don't, uh, don't want to give anything up too, too early. They have the advantage, and you don't want to give that up by pulling off something stupid. So Zig has actually picked up Caitlyn, which just so happens to, uh, to be Alcos's uh, main character. I believe, uh, I believe has like an 80% win rate with Caitlyn, so that's definitely something you want to watch out for. Premature stun going off by spells. I'm sure he's just kind of like, you know, playing around there. There's a pink ward in the bush for Worldwide Wipers, so, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, going to keep them pretty safe. There's not going to be any sort of like extreme uh, ghosting into the lane, or stealthing I believe it's called now. It used to be called ghosting, but too much confusion with the summoner spell. So, yes, it's just trying to catch up. He's only level 2. Level 3 will be picked up by Clicky D. Once he picks up yeah, there he goes, level 3 after the blue buff, so he's going to grab first uh, blue buff, and if we check to see exactly where that is, uh, the, the ping's going up, that is from Little Reddick, he is top lane, and the ignite plus the Vorpal Blade is going to be enough, but no, double ignite will pick up the kill on, no, oh my goodness, Zion Spartan goes down, spear there from Clakey D is going to uh, pick up the kill as he just like runs in under turret, takes a couple of shots, and uh, gets the kill there, but I uh, kind of misplayed there by Zion Spartan, um, you know, I definitely thought he would have gone down, but a little bit too much health, and uh, meanwhile, mid lane, the gang on Captain Korea is effective as well, so that ties the game up 2-2, two to two. and uh, that is the weakness of going Twisted Fate. Now, let me talk a little bit about the strategy here uh, from just your average Joes. Uh, they are running, uh, let me do some introductions, Zion Spartan's going top on Shen, and uh, Shen, as you might know, really, really strong right now in the metagame, really gives you uh, the first pick, first ban, a, a lot of power, because you are either, you either force the other team to ban Shen, or you get him, and it looks like, um, well, it doesn't look like, because they actually did pick up Shen, and uh, that kind of dictated the rest of their team comp, because what what else they have are Clakey D running Pantheon, and Captain Korea on Twisted Fate. All three of those have global ult, so a really strong global strat here, and really all you need is Twisted Fate, our Twisted Fate, and Pantheon to pull off absolutely crazy ganks once both of them hit six. But uh, with Shen ult there as well, anywhere a gank goes off once Shen hits six is instantly one man up for the uh, team being ganked, so that's a really strong... Uh, facet of having Shen on your team. 
Looks like uh, bot lane is going pretty well as 27 CS to only 20. So Zig doing what Caitlyn's do. And uh, looks like, yeah, sorry for not. I unfortunately got in here because I was not sure what was going on. Cleanse being burned there by uh, Kog'Ma. Oh, wow. Double skill shot takes him down to 50 health. So he's going to go ahead and get out of there unless uh, Pantheon may try to flash over here. He's going for the kill. He sees, they see the flash in Fog of War. It looks like, oh my goodness, he uses the jump on Kalik to be able to uh, get the extra... Oh my goodness, he gets out with 50 HP, and that is why you auto-attack as a support. One auto-attack probably, uh, would have taken two auto-attacks to get the kill off there on Clakey D, but uh, Clakey D goes hard in the paint, and uh, you can see them actually looking for the flash here in the Fog of War. Once they saw that, you could see that Kog'Maw stopped being, and I definitely feel like he just should have kept running, because uh, that's uh, what you want to do. Captain Korea getting burst down mid once again. He is not having a fun time. So is going to get out of there with about 200, 300 health, and uh, wow, really effective ganks here by both teams, but I feel like, you know, Clicky D just has to, has so much more on him. Uh, Yetz is one of those GP5 junglers, doesn't have to get ganks off to be effective, but he's coming in here, and it looks like Zion Spartan will dash after the, uh, the snare is already on him. The, the, oh wow, just horrible team communication there by uh, Worldwide Wipers. They should have just gone in there or not wasted the uh, exhaust as uh, now Yetz is going to be waiting in here. He's going to try for another gank, but uh, Zion Spartan is going to be able to go back. Zig picks up the kill on Kalec, who gets stunned by Spellzy for the win. And uh, unfortunately, that's going to start to pull bottom lane really far ahead. You know, this isn't quite the solo queue terror, you know, win your lane, win the game, but it is still important to uh, do as well as you can, and it looks like bottom lane is uh, going strongly in favor of Caitlyn. Already 2-0, has that BF sword, not going any for, for any of this European meta stuff where you build uh, lots of Dorian's blades and then wriggles or anything super cost efficient like that. Just straight up buying the BF sword, and uh, he's going to have some friends forever down there. Zion Spartan versus uh, Malphi top lane. Looks like Zion is doing so much damage. I don't understand that about like the new Shen. So he, he was tanky, but he didn't really have any reason to get you know attacked. And now he has a taunt that's okay. But why did they give him damage on everything? I, I, I don't know. Uh, box of the wall to try to scout things out. But little does he know, Clakey D is already at his red buff. He could go all the way. He actually pulls the red buff right as Yetz goes over here. And that is one of the great things about having Maokai in the jungle. You can kind of get... Uh... Ooh. Ooh. You can't kind of get saved by Shen there. So apparently that is why they wanted to do that. Meanwhile, mid lane, Captain Korea dying once again. And they are just absolutely feeding it up. Uh... I, I mean, they've got bot lane, so I definitely think that's good. Yet, actually, may go down here, knocks them back, but uh, will he actually go down? No, Pantheon gets taunted and could actually go down, but Zion Spartan going in for the kill. And now they're going to turn on to Ari here. Ari's going to bust it back to mid lane, get around her turret, and that's going to make her pretty safe, although uh, Shen pretty much does whatever he wants. I've seen a lot of Shens start with Ruby Crystal, but it looks like Doran's Shield, not a very popular item is going to be the first item for Shen as well as Boots. So he'll probably go out, go back after pushing out this lane. Pantheon's going to go soak up some EXP top lane, but uh, he does not have a whole lot of health. No health pots either, so he's just going to try to last it under turret as well as he can. And it uh, looks like he's doing a pretty good job of that. Meanwhile, mid lane, yeah, Zion's just going to go back. We'll see what he opts to pick up. Probably going to complete his Boots and or go for a Heart of Gold. Is that is such a good item on... Mmm... On him, actually, just, yeah, straight up picking up the Giant's belt. So, really big pickups by every single member of Jester Average Joe. So, he's going to dash on up to top lane. 90 seconds left on his ult. Pantheon's pinging on the blue buff. I'm not sure if they actually will give that to Captain Korea because he is so far behind mid lane. He may just, like, feed it up. And, yeah, blue buff goes on to Clakey D. So, uh, relatively mana effective uh, champion. You know, it's more of, more of an ability AD carry. Not quite the pantheon that we all know and love from the good old days of League of Legends that could, you know, 1v1 basically anyone. You see them, they die instantaneously, you know, fun times. Looks like, uh, wow, Yet and Zo are both here trying to ghost into bottom lane. They're going to try to force a fight. They have a ward in the bush. They know that Zig and Spellzy are vulnerable. Looks like they will get knocked up here. Kalik goes down really low, but uh, the all coming in from 
from Ari once again. Spellzy sacrificing himself for the good of the AD carry. They know as long as Zig stays alive, they are doing well, but this looks like a perfect dragon opportunity. Malphite is coming down here. Captain Korea could do a lot of damage. He knows that Malphite wants to cycle around there. Down to dragon. Malphite's just going to hold the uh, mid lane. Looks like, uh, yeah, Captain Korea is going to try to get as much harassment off as he can. Pantheon Jump is actually going to come in. Yes, we'll take the full force of the Pantheon Jump. Goes down almost instantaneously. Dragon does get reset, and it looks like... Oh my goodness, Kog'Maw does go down there as well. He's going to run back, but not get an explosion off. Actually, yeah, it does, get, does hit Zig, but uh, Brzo is waiting in the wings. Almost has his ult up in about 50 seconds, which is not really almost as well. But uh, Captain Korea gets perfectly taunted, and uh, it looks like will go down once again. But this will be a dragon for just your average Joes. So that is something. Actually, is the dragon low health right now? Yeah, will go down right there, but uh, Ari is just so big right now. I don't care whether it's today or tomorrow, his team is coming big, and it looks like, yes, Belzy is going to um, attempt to drop some wards, which is effective because he's, you know, the support character. So he's going to go back, we're going to check out how much gold he has, he has 600, so may actually just stop to work on a uh, ruby crystal, yeah, he's going to go for harder gold next, already has his boots, which uh, did set his extra GP5s uh, down a little bit, oh my goodness. Ah, technical delay number one is out of the way. So Zion Spartan versus Malphite top lane is going really solidly in favor of Shen. But uh, you can tell a little bit by the actions of your lane mate what's going on with the rest of his team. You know, some people are really good at baiting, but uh, Luna Relic is just hanging around Zion Spartan, who can definitely kill him right now, just because he knows that Mal or Maokai is really next to him. Maokai and Malphite on the same team are not really making it too, too easy on me. They're pinging up there. They're telling Zion Spartan to GTFO, but uh, he's actually going to be in a kind of a pickle right now. He's actually just going to ult off as now they have no way to displace his Bada. Ults the mid lane. <laughs> oh, they did extend that to three seconds, but uh, more than enough time. He waited for the stun. He waited for the knock up or the snare rather. And uh, then just ulted out of there to a uh, victory and said, Peace out, guys. I got this. Goes ahead and finishes up the way back to base by hitting the B button. And uh, Clay KD is actually really, uh, you know, effective this game. He's been in pretty much every game. He is 4-0 and with 2-0 and on Kaelin. So they have everything they could possibly need on their team. All the kills in the right places. Uh, except for Captain Korea, who's a little bit uh, tiny right now. Looks like... They are going to ult in. That will be a kill onto Kogba. Kalix going to flash away, but the ult coming off there will be enough to pick up the kill. So one more kill going down for Zig. Looks like Ari and Pzo, or rather Pzo and Yetz, are in the bushes waiting for anybody who tries to get a little bit too greedy. But uh, just average Joe's doing a really good job so far at uh, just pushing their advantages where they have them. And uh, Captain Korea, you know... There's been a really strong meta that's been coming out recently where you're going to sacrifice basically one member of your team. It's similar to uh, what uh, Phantom Lord loves to do on uh, on Karthus. You just go revive, teleport, you're going to scale really well, you're just going to take the deaths and push yourself into late game as fast as humanly possible. Now that's not what they intended to do here with Captain Korea, but uh, actually, oh wow, Ari is going to go hard in on Zig, who flashes to avoid the Q, but is he going to go down nonetheless? It looks like... He may actually go down to one more auto attack. Yes, Malachi is going to pick up the kill with that twisted advance. So Kaelin will fall there. First death for the AD carry, and that is not something that Worldwide Vipers can say right now as uh, Kog'Maw is 1 and 3. So a little bit of a difference there for the 3 and 1 Kaelin. So that's going to really impact their bot lane. They will have to get ganks. And I'm not sure if I would have taken that early turret down there. I'd just leave it up and continue to farm your lane. Kaelin farms so, so well. It looks like Spelzia actually may be in a little bit of trouble. Just going to get poked down below half health. Dodges the Kog'Maw ult, and uh, will just try to protect that turret with the best of his uh, yawning abilities. Clicky D is actually going to come in here, and it looks like they may actually be able to get something done. Spellsy will ult, Spellsy will ignite, and there goes the kill down onto Kalik. But uh, will Pantheon be able to 1v1 Kog'Maw? He is slowed right now. Is the jump going to come off of cooldown? No, it's going to be up in about 4 seconds. He's going to jump onto Kog'Maw. The flash is going to be able to get him out, but the ult comes in there from Twisted Fate. This is why you go double ult strategies. There goes down the stun. There goes the kill, and Captain Korea will pick up his first kill of the game. So redeeming himself a little bit there. Perfect ult situation. You can see him come down 
from mid lane, right down there into perfect ulting range, and I believe I said that twice in a row, but that does not make it any less effective as they did pick up that kill, so Zion Spartan could have ulted in there as well, but he's going to taunt, he's going to get some damage off of here, but once again, Maokai is waiting in the eaves, going to pick up that red buff, and then he's going to head straight up to top lane, try to help out Malphite, who is really, really low, but after almost a Warmog's picked up by Zion Spartan, plus healing up so effectively off of absolutely every single minion, Ah, it's going to be a little bit hard to gank. Uh, actually, Ari's coming up as well. Ari does not have a death cap yet, but uh, could definitely buy one if she wanted to. Just kidding. Does not have that much gold. But uh, Zion Spartan actually does have his ult yet, so could actually get out of there. The ult does come off, and it looks like he's just going to try for the kill on Malphi. Malphi does have the ignite ticking down. It will actually go down there. So one for one, Zion Spartan are doing really good job. Zion Spartan doing a really good job. There we go. I can use my words, guys. I promise once I put my mind to it, which isn't probably saying much, but uh, Pink Ward actually at their blue buff, they know that uh, Just Ravage Joes is a really, really aggressive team and a really good place to Pink Ward nowadays as once you ward the blue buff, you can really control not just the jungle, but also the transition to Dragon as once you contest blue buff, you know, whatever happens there, you can back off from that if it doesn't go in your favor, if you're on the blue side and then just go take Dragon with a more advantageous situation so you're not really losing anything. So uh, Captain Korea, He's kind of coming back. He hasn't died recently, so Ari, I feel like, could burst him down if her ult was up. But as it is not up, it looks like um, you know, Twisted Fate's just going to go ahead and back. Probably try to pick up part of his uh, part of his hat. Yeah, there goes the uh, blasting one, or rather the needlessly large rod. And actually, Zig is not doing too well. He's trying to get himself out of there, but uh, gets pushed back and uh, will actually go down there. So, flash over the wall by Spellzy, but right into Ari. He's going to try to dodge, but uh, to no avail. He's actually going to get ulted on by Shed. I don't think this is a very good engage. Spellzy will almost certainly go down, and Shed is going to just dash over the wall. I don't actually like that decision, any facet of it at all. Clicky D and Captain Korea are here in mid lane. Zion Spartan will actually buffer a little bit. He's going to retreat back to his team. They're actually going to jump on to Kayla. Kayla will go down, but so will Clanky D. And not looking good to, uh, not looking too well, too good right now. Oh my goodness. My, uh, my mouth is, uh, completely out of commission right here. Looks like the ult did go off from Captain Korea. He's going to kill Ari with a burst combo. I'm not sure if they just did not know where he was, but, uh, thanks to that ult, they knew exactly where Ari was. Perfect position there by Captain Korea, and, uh, they're not going to be able to get the kill off on yet. Just going to go for the kill on Ludo Reddick, who does go down as well, and the flash in is not good enough to pick up Kog'Maw, so, uh, with an ult used, that is going to, uh, wow, so much damage even without the hat. Maokai gets taken down to a uh, sub 150 health, so, ouch. Uh, so much pain going down so low, and it looks like they're hanging on to dragons, so... If I, if I never say so, or it looks like again, it will be too soon. Ult going to go off for Pantheon. Just going to get 1,000 damage on Dragonish. I think it's about at 700 right now. Yeah, 700 damage, because he's not building AP Pantheon. Always a hilarious strat, because you get the ult scaling, you get the uh, the shield bash scaling. It's, uh, it's incredibly effective up until about 12 minutes, or when people figure out that you're just being retarded. So, Ziggs is going to... I'm going to call him Ziggs like this entire game. So, Zig farms out the top lane, and uh, he and Spellzy are just kind of camping around here on the ward that's going to signal pretty much every member from Worldwide Wipers to come down here, and if they can get out, they're pinging onto them, will they be able to get there in time? Spellzy is almost done this, oh my goodness, the ult from Kog'Maw coming just too late. They probably even saw uh, the blue rings from the B button getting him out of there. Zion Spartan's going to go back as well, already picked up a Warmogs, which means so much of his stats are going to be ridiculously buffed, uh, yeah, f plus, oh my goodness, that's over 100 damage, it's over 150 damage, holy crap, probably not over 150, I, I, I'm, I'm going to give that, like, exactly 150, one thing you cannot do is math during casting, so if I can avoid doing that for the rest of this game, I will be doing well, looks like as I said it again, I'm just going to, like, end my horrible, miserable, like, never mind, anyways, we're so gonna finish off farming mid lane, but a really strong positioning there by just your average Joe's. I'm trying to figure out what on earth Yet is doing. He's just gonna run straight into Captain Korea, but uh, as he has picked up a lot of health, actually doesn't have that much MR. Only 47. They realize after shutting down Captain Korea mid, they don't really have to worry about that. Uh, about the AP so much, and that's a really strong thing. If you can shut down mid, that's one of the weaknesses of the current meta. 
Only thing you can do is, uh, I mean, if you do shut down the AP mid, uh, unless, you are, unless you're running AP top, you don't really have to worry about building magic resist, which makes it a lot harder on your AD carry, although most AD carries get uh, Last Whisper anyways, so you don't really have that much to worry about. Bloodthirster first, actually, on Kaelin. If we check out its stacks, it is about halfway stacked, so a little bit more than halfway stacked. So many traps there, really good engagement point. For uh, just your average Joe's, the ult's gonna come up by Pantheon, it's gonna land right on top of Kog'Maw, it looks like, oh my goodness, a Jan ult pushing Clakey D to safety, which is actually his death, or rather the death of everybody else, looks like Zion Spartan and Clakey D gonna jump onto a Kog'Maw, one more spear will pick up the kill, there it goes, Clakey D picking it up once again, he is 9-1, and, and right now Pantheon's Looking a little bit like pre-patch Pantheon. Ult going off from Twisted Fate. Will we actually see him ult on top of Yetz? No, the ult runs out. And right now Pantheon will try to pick that up. No, backs off. And uh, yeah, that is a 4-4 four, four, none in favor of Jester Average Joe's, who apparently are anything but average. They're going to push in here on Baron Buff. And I don't really think that there's anything that Worldwide Wipers will be able to do about this. Uh, Mal Malkai, I keep wanting to say Malphite, is going to reposition over there. They're going to try to ward it a little bit. Uh, wow, once you put that Vorpal Blade on Baron, <laughs> he just does zero damage. And that's uh, ridiculously effective. Uh, no Oracles, so they will not be able to clear that off. But uh, yeah, Spellsy is here. They're going to dash over the wall. Will we be able to see a Pantheon jump over the wall? I don't think so. Zion Spartan with plenty of damage. I didn't realize the present sapling hopped around on Malkai's dead body after he died. And it just falls over dead. That's so sad. That's like the saddest thing I have ever seen besides a Moo Moo's dance. Ah, shenanigans. Anyways, uh, Captain Korea with the Baron buff is going to go up, clear out top lane. There's nothing that pretty much anyone can do about that. Actually, seen the Oracles unpopped on Malphite right there. So I think that uh, the Oracles is not what you are needing once you know that there are no buffs in contention and you can't really team fight. So... Uh, Ari definitely doing work this game. She is probably the best uh, best asset that Worldwide Wipers has at the moment. She is three and two, three and three Maokai with a five and five Kogma. I definitely thought Kogma died more than that, but apparently he was also able to pick up all of those kills, which I'm sure everybody but me noticed because I'm pretty bad at life. Uh, looks like uh, Zion Spartan's gonna run up to top lane, finish pushing that out. As TF did decide to go back, pick up his hat. Also has a Sheen, so he'll be going for that Lich Bane next. Blue buff surprisingly still up, uh, not counter jungled by just your average Joe's going to go to Worldwide Wipers and in their defense they have a really really uh, solid um, like just a hold off team. Maokai just really good at making team fights go favorable with 20% damage reduction on everybody inside his ult. Ari will be able to poke, will be able to clear waves incredibly effectively. Uh, they actually, the ult goes off and Twisted Fate will ult down there instantaneously. Popping Kogma. Wow, that was so dirty. It's like that's what I said earlier about the global <laughs> Just in case. Oh yeah from Shen. Yeah, the global ult strategy. You really only need Twisted Fate and Pantheon to make that work. But Shen coming in there for the and one will go ahead and pick up the kill there on Kogma. And there's nothing you can do. It's like what are you going to do against that? You just you're at your turret. You're in the safest place possible. And all of a sudden you see a ring appear and you're like, okay, it's Pantheon. Let me just walk out of his ult. But then Twisted Fate teleports in with like a one second cooldown, stuns you in the middle of the Pantheon ult, then Pantheon stuns you on top of that, and then it's just ah, uh, it's so like mind destroying. It, uh. And actually shout outs to Team Subterfuge. They uh, at least popularized this for me in the last go for lol absolutely epic games. From that, and Ari not even able to push in on Captain Korea as, uh, you know, Ari's been dominating Twisted Fate this entire game, but with the presence of Zion, Spartan, and Spellsy, there's just so much CC you cannot initiate on that. And, uh, <laughs> looks like Malachi's going to try that, but <laughs> Ari just gets dumped on by Clakey D. The next to fall will be Malachi. Malphite will go down as well. It looks like Kalec is gonna go down to a random card there as well as a spear. No, it looks like the card did pick that up. And uh, the taunt going off from Shen Clan's not good enough. So apparently your dead body will be able to run around uninhibited by any CC, which is probably true no matter what's uh, what's going on. But if you could CC dead Kogma, it would not be effective because he had Clan's on. Anyways, it looks like <laughs> yeah, close game. 25 to 15 will be the score. Congratulations to Jester Average Joes for defeating Worldwide Wipers in round two. 
of the ESL Major Series Open number one. So uh, good game to both teams. And congratulations. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like, subscribe, whatever you want to do. And I will see you guys in the next game. Peace out.